Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. You know, today, inshallah ta'ala, it's going to be very exciting what I'm going to go through. Uh, the different meanings of the word Masih, when it refers to Masih al-Dajjal, and when it refers to Masih Isa ibn Maryam. Masih is different meanings when it applies to Jesus, and it's different meanings that apply to the Dajjal, and some of the meanings that apply to both. And so, you know, uh, one of the things that I have experienced after having quite a few teachers in my life is that always the good teachers, like the really pious teachers, uh, like if you say to them, like, I want to write a book, so the first question they'll ask is, what is your intention? Why do you want to do this? What is your intention, right? And so, what is the intention here? The intention here is, inshallah, for me and those that are listening with me and uh, that we inshallah ta'ala the intention is to further to be able to distinguish between who is who is the dajjal who is who is claiming to be masih and claiming to be masih but he's dajjal he's lying and so the intention is to uh, be able to understand uh, uh, the qualities of this person in more detail in terms of the very definition the very definition of what masih is and one day we will study, inshallah ta'ala, in the same way, what is Dajjal, okay? But Masih is extremely important. In fact, I think because the word Masih comes in Quran, and the word Dajjal comes in Hadith, even though the word Masih Dajjal comes in Hadith, but the word Masih is more emphasized in Quran. And in some ways, in that respect, the word Masih is even more important than uh, Dajjal, okay? And uh, there's a lot to say about this because uh, you will be interested in knowing how things are evolving. And inshallah, one day I will talk about that. But without any uh, further uh, ado, let us inshallah get straight into the different uh, meanings of the word Dajjal. Okay. So, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Masaha shay'a. So, I, would, I meant to say is that make your intention that I'm learning this to save myself from the Dajjal and my family from the Dajjal and my friends and whoever I forward this to from the Dajjal. Okay? Masaha shay'a. Masaha means to touch. Okay? He wiped a thing that was wet or dirty. Now, I will share with you something very, very interesting that you want to keep in your mind. Okay? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, uh, Ya Isa, inni mutawafika wa rafiuka ilayya wa mutahhiruka min alladhina kafaru. You know, one of my uh, very close friends, uh, Imam Isa, uh, Isa Woods, uh, he, he, he mentioned this to me and it struck, struck uh, really well with me. And it, it struck because when Isa is coming down, when he's going to come down, how will he be? He will be wet. He's always in a state of wudu. He's always wet. Okay? And in fact, he may have been the beginning of until until Yahya alayhi salatu was salam, the requirement was the requirement of baptism was the requirement within the Sharia of the past was is that you have to take ghusl. There was no like wudu as such. Okay, it's like you have to. And in the Sharias before, they used to have a pool of water all the time, and you go into that lake or into that pool, and then then you were ready to pray. This is a valid opinion. It may not be the only opinion, but it's a valid opinion. Okay. But with Isa alayhi salatu salam, the idea of masha started. Okay, anyway, so um, let us go back. And so, masha shay'un, masha, he wiped a thing that was wet or dirty with his hands and passed his hand over, removed it, removed the wet or dirt that was upon it. Okay, so this is, uh, you know, specifically uh, relating to Isa alayhi salatu salam. He would, if you look in his seerah also, he would, uh, you know, um, he would always put his hand and heal people and so on and so forth. Wipe his hand over uh, a thing. And so, masaha, the passing of the, uh, of the hand over a thing that is flowing with water. And this is where, basically, part of where they get their baptism idea from, okay? Um, that is flowing with water or the like, dirty, soiled, and polluted remove the fluid or dirt, soil or pollution. And you know Isa alayhi salatu wasalam especially because Musa alayhi salatu wasalam represents the law, the, the, the sharia, the qanun, right? Of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Isa alayhi salatu wasalam in the, in, the, in the 
opposite sense represents he's the purifier he's the healer right and so the prophet combined both of these he brought law but he was also a healer right and so he had both of these aspects uh and so uh, as when wipes uh, one wipes his head with his hand to remove water his forehead to remove sweat okay he stroked a thing with his hand, as, for instance, the black stone of the Kaaba. Masaha ra'suhu min al ma. Okay. Uh, then also he wiped. Uh, then it, it continues with, uh, he wiped with his hand or passed his hand closely over his head. So this masaha that we do over our head is it's also one of its meanings. And then it goes into great detail about this. So I'm going to skip about the masaha per se, but. Uh, this is one of the things that relates to, so, oh, what I wanted to share with you about when I said, وَمُطَحِّرُكَ Allah says, I will purify you. And so when Isa is coming down, he's coming down in this state of wudu, right? And water is dropping and dripping from him. It's like fresh wudu. So he's always in that, and, and you know, um, this state of wudu is a very powerful spiritual state, okay? That Isa was in, and after that, our Prophet also recommended it. Recommended it. Uh, but Mas'ha signifies both he wiped with the hand and also he washed. So Mas'ha can mean wash also. Even though within Quran, I have to say, the word for washing is ghusr. Is faghsilu uh, wujuhakum. Okay. Um, then the other meaning is uh, biyadi. I washed my hands with water. Okay. Mas'ha shay'un bil ma. To touch something with water. And you know, water is that thing. Now, those of you who have been uh, studying Islamic eschatology for some time will know the significance of water, okay? And that the future wars are over water, and water is ma'am mubaraka. Water is a very sacred thing, but when it comes to the end of times, wars will be, because water will be very scarce, okay? So keep this in mind, and how this relates to this. Inshallah, one day I'm going to talk about that, but it does indirectly relate to this. Uh, uh, now, uh, let us continue over here. So then it says he passed his hand over the corner in which, uh, so this also passing the black stone when you go around the Kaaba to pass. Mas'allahu anka ma bika means may Allah forgive you what is wrong with you and the sins of you, okay? It becomes more interesting as we continue. Uh, he was characterized by somewhat or by some sign or mark or nobility. Masaha means to have some mark. Masaha bil karam. Okay. He has some mark of nobility. Okay. So that is one aspect of it. He. Uh, it also means to comb your hair. Masaha means also to mashata. Okay. So it means the same as mashata. Uh, the one who is the hairdresser, you can say. Masaha lahya, stroking of the beard, touching the beard, stroking the beard, right? Masahu uh, bil ma'ruf, he spoke to him in good words, okay? But tamsih, uh, okay? Now this is referring to the Antichrist, meaning the Jal. He, that is the one, so the same word that means to, the one is purifying. Now here, the same word is meaning what? Such a one beguiles, deceives. Okay, Masaha means he lied, uttered what is false. So when you say Masihu Dajjal, Dajjal literally means fraud or to deceive. Okay, it literally one of its mean, meanings is gold plated uh, to uh, to put gold on something like a false gold, right? So he's lying and deceiving. He's trying to show himself as something that he's not. Okay, he lied, uttered what is false. Masaha. Okay. Now, the next one could refer to both of them, which is Masaha fil Ard. He set forth journeying through the land. The, the manhaj of Isa alayhi salatu was, he would go from one city to the next city, to the next city, to the next city, to the next city. To the next city, to the next city okay? And his whole life was in journey. Why? Because his cousin, Yahya, was killed and the Romans were after Isa alayhi salatu wasalam. And before that, Zakaria was also killed by the Romans. And so he was in this state where he needed to be in different places. So, and what's interesting about this uh, Netflix movie that is coming out, right? They also showed this Messiah where 
the FBI or the CIA is chasing him, trying to cra track him down, but he's always eluding them, and he's always moving. And so this is Isa alayhi salatu wasalam, he was always moving and moving and moving, okay? The Dajjal also will go around the entire earth, okay? And uh, the Prophet has talked about this, that how he will travel from city to city, from one place of the earth to the next place of the earth, and so on and so forth, okay? He, uh, okay, he set forth journey through the land, or the earth, okay? Masahahum, uh, he passed lightly by them, brushed by them, without remaining by them. And he comes temporarily and leaves, comes temporarily and leaves, right? The inner sides of his thighs rubbing together. Masaha, masaha also means to walk so much that your thighs, they rub each other to the point that there's a sore. Okay, so this meaning is also there. It is possible because Isa alayhi was always moving from one place to the other place, right? He was doing masha, then he was doing masha and purifying the people, curing the people from their diseases. And he was also doing wudu all the time. If you read the Bible, the New Testament, this is so clear. You know, I wish I would have brought out uh, the verses of the Bible showing how much times the Bible talks about the, the washing. And he washed, Jesus washed his feet, and they washed Jesus' feet. And it's it's all over. In fact, uh, let me just pause this and maybe bring this out since this subject is being discussed. So very quickly, inshallah, starting from the very beginning of the Bible to Genesis, right? Please, let a little water be brought and wash your feet. Now, they say feet, wash the feet, but actually it's referring to either ghusl or wudu. This is the real intent because when you read these passages further, you'll see that it always refers to that in conjunction with congregation or prayers and so on and so forth. And he said, now behold my lords, please turn aside into your servant's house and spend the night and wash your feet. Okay? Then you may rise early and go on your way. They said, however, no, but we shall spend the night in the square. Okay? And it continues and continues in the Bible. There are, I think, about 12 verses in the Bible about washing uh, the feet and the head and so on and so forth. But I just took out feet here. Sometimes it refers to washing the hands. Sometimes it refers to washing the the the, the head. Uh, that idea of washing meaning masaha washing is actually ghusl is, is is you know and when it and they would signify it by mentioning a part of the body okay meaning this was an idiom that's used is what i'm trying to say and if uh, if then your lord and master have washed your feet yea also ought to wash another's feet okay meaning help someone else do ghusl or help someone else do wudu, this meaning is also there. Anyway, let's go back to the dictionary of this. Okay, so to walk so much that you become tired, uh, that you become sore. Also, when you put a saddle on a camel, so much, it rides so much that it becomes sore, okay? He made the backs of the camels to be wounded by saddles, okay? And uh, and then, masaha, uh, and in the latter sense, masaha, uh, Okay, so continue right there. Uh, now you will find uh, he measured the land. Okay, now this has also to do with uh, you know going through the land, which is masih means somebody who's going from one land to the next land, from one place to the next place. Okay, and he cut and severed, he struck, he smote, he severed the neck and arm. Okay, this is also a very important part of. Uh, maybe both of them, but definitely Isa alayhi salatu wasalam, okay? You'll find in the Bible where Jesus clearly says, many, many times Jesus has said, I have been brought with the sword. I have been brought to separate the mother uh, from the father, from the, the, the daughter from the mother, the son from the father. These are words of Jesus in the Bible, okay? But what is more interesting is another set of words, which I'll show you right now, okay? So Isa wasalam, says in the Bible, Do not think I have come to bring peace to earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. And this is his actual role, right? He comes as a judgment of Allah upon earth when he comes, especially to the people that rejected him, right? For I have come to set man against his father, a daughter against his mother, a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, and a person's enemies will be those of his own household. 
In another place, Jesus, peace be upon him, says, again, this is in the Bible. I know a lot of people don't know this, but when you talk about jihad and Muslims, well, here. But, and Jesus says, after he conquers the, the temple, I mean, takes over the temple, and he conquers Jerusalem, and people don't know about this part of the history, but it's in the Bible. But those enemies of mine who do not want me to be king over them, bring them here and kill them in front of me. Then, in another place, right before Isa a.s. was raised, right? He asked his companions to fight for him. فَلَمَّا حَسَّ عِيسَى مِنْهُمُ الْكُفْرَ When Isa felt kufr from them, that they're going to kill him. قَالَ مَنْ أَنْصَارِ إِلَى اللَّهِ He said, okay, who's going to help me? The same thing is here. With that, one of Jesus' companions reached out for his sword, drew it out and cut, and struck the servant of the high priest, cut, cutting off his ear. They responded by taking out the swords. Most of them didn't do it, but some of them did it. And so, let us go back. So he smut, smote the, his neck, some say severed it, cut it through, like he cut the neck. Agreeably, both of these significance, mashan, is rendered in, and, and it continues, okay? And, and the thing is that this can also be true for the jal, that he will come and kill people, okay? If you, and he will cut you off, and he will kill people, and, uh, you know, in, 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 in mass, almost. Some say that what is meant here is the wiping with the hand wetted with water. As in the case of Sulaiman alayhi salatu wasalam, Mas'ahu bis Saif, uh, the verse in Surah al -Sad, which refers to the word Mas'ha in the sense of killing. Uh, so, Masih means the one who comes to kill, to obliterate, to finish off a people who rejected the truth. And who would that be? And I will tell you something interesting here. And that is that there's a rule. When Allah sends a messenger, that nation has to be punished in front of that messenger. And that messenger cannot leave his post until he sees that punishment happen. Because he's the prosecution witness. He is the witness on behalf of the government that yes, I conveyed the message and yes, this happened to them. He's the prosecution. He is the witness. They rejected the message. So if it's Lut, he left after the... Same thing with Nuh. He left after the punishment started. The only case that's the exception is Yunus a.s. He left his place of duty before the time came to an... Before the punishment started, he left. And so, لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك إني كنت من الظالمين That dua of Yunus a.s. happened. Every prophet has to stay. But every time a prophet is rejected, a people have to be destroyed. I and my Rasul have to prevail. But there's one exception. One is Yunus, I mentioned as an exception. But there's another exception. And that is the people to whom Isa was sent to. They rejected him. They rejected him. Now he will be brought back because this is the sunnah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The sunnah of Allah is if you reject a prophet, you have to be, you're a cancer on the face of the earth. You have to be removed. You rejected the prophet of Allah. He brought you clear signs, right? And you, you were so arrogant, you can't accept the truth from a prophet of Allah. So this is the sunnah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we know who Isa alayhi salatu wa salam was sent to. And this is just the fact of life, okay? So, uh, this is very, very important part of this. So, Isa a.s. is coming as Masih, as the one who is going to bring the judgment of Allah, because a people who, re they have rejected him, and they have to be removed, those that reject him. But there's another ayah of the Quran that says uh, that everyone of the Ahlul Kitab, meaning many of them, will believe in Isa a.s. Many of the Jewish people and the Christian people, when Isa a.s. comes, they will accept the true Isa a.s. the true Jesus. That is for another discussion, inshallah. But his role is what I'm trying to say is going to come as the one who cuts the people off.
cuts out your people. Okay? Uh, struck him gently with a staff, a stick, with a, and with a sword. So all of these meanings are there. He slew them, as we just mentioned in the Bible. He Then the other is, specifically to Isa alayhi salatu wasalam. And for Masih al-Dijjal will be the opposite. Which is, Mubarakan ayna ma kuntu. Right? Salamun alayya yawma walidtu wa yawma amutu wa yawma ub'athu hayya. He, Allah, created him blessed and goodly. And this is the meaning of Masih. Wherever he goes, he brings blessings. Wherever he's, and he's never in one place con, uh, constantly. He's always on the move. And wherever he goes, he brings blessings. Okay? And then, contrast to them, the same word Masih means created him accursed, foul or ugly. Oh, and you know the meaning we read where the, uh, your, your, because I mentioned, because you walk so much, you get sore. If you remember the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam about the jal, his feet will be crooked, and it's possible that because his feet will be crooked, that he will walk in a way that if he walks too much, his legs become sore. Allahu a'lam. But this will also come into uh, another definition that we'll be reading. Okay, but he is cursed and ugly wherever he is, or he is a blessing wherever he is. Both these meanings are there. Mas masahu took him by the hand, applied the palm of his hand to the palm of the other's hand, which is bay'ah, okay? To take your hand on the hand of the other person, this is the bay'ah that Isa alayhi salatu wasalam will take, the pledge he will take that when he becomes the Khalifa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on earth. Ya da'uda, ya da'udu inni ja'iluka khalifatan fil ard. Right, so over here will be Isa alayhi salatu wasalam, we will give bay'ah to him, and so he, okay, made a pact, a covenant with him. Masaha, they took, used, to, uh, the other meaning is uh, something that is used for deceiving, soothing with their words, uh, hearts not being sincere. Okay, this is also Masih. You say, غَضِبَ فَمَسَّحْتُهُ حَتَّى الآن. He was angry and, and uh, until he became uh, حَتَّى الآن. Uh, he was angry until he became so masaha masih means angry and if you read very interestingly enough if you read the bible especially the new testament and especially within the new testament if you read the five the four gospels the canonical gospels you'll find Isa his tone is not nice yahya used to be nice his tone was much softer but isa was saying the exact same thing that yahya was saying but he would say you're com you're a people you're like snakes you're like vipers. He would he would just give it to them. He would lay it. He was very, very... Isa a.s. was a great speaker, but he was very, very harsh. This, and it is, he was angry. And he was, you know, harsh in, in the sense that he was angry. Tamasaha bil ma washed himself with water. Okay? And this is how he performed the evolution called wudu. Okay? Tamsih bil ard means he performed an action term to tayyimam. Okay? So, when I remember I said there will be a time, so we'll do water and then masaha happens when there's no water. I mean, you know, you have to do masaha, you have to touch, basically. There's no, there's no, well, there's no way of doing what. So you just, it's, it's, it comes in the sense of doing tayyimam, when there's no water. Because Isa alayhi salatu wasalam will come at a time where there will be a lack of water because of the wars that will be happening over water. Okay, this is based upon a saying hadith in Sayyid Bukhari, which is very long. I'm not going to go into that right now. Okay, Fulan uh, Such one, his garment passed over a man's person as a means of their advancing themselves in the favor of Allah. Okay, someone who advances himself in the in the favor of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has he is the holy man from the touch of whose garment a blessing is derived. Mubarakan aina ma kuntu, right? Wa awsani bis salati wa zakati ma dumtu hayya. I am blessed wherever I am, right? And I bring blessings wherever, even his clothes will have blessings, right? Uh, um, like uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says uh, about the, uh, uh, about the, the tabut, uh, the tabut that was carried by the angels. Uh, tabut. 
تحملوا ملائكة. So this kind of you know, and you know with Isa alayhi salatu wasalam, the ruh wa ayyadnahu bi ruh al-Qudus. So the angels are around him also. So his clothes are even a uh, blessing. Such a one is a person by means of whom one looks for a blessing by reason of his excellence and his devotion as though one advanced himself in the favor of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that's Isa alayhi salatu wasalam. Falan tamassaha. Okay. Uh, such a one has nothing with him or in his possession. And this is true. When Isa alayhi salatu wasalam said, pick up the cross, what he meant is be ready to die. Go from one place to the next place to the next place with there's nothing in his possession. Okay? Whereas the Jal will be the exact opposite. He'll have everything in his possession. He'll act humble. He'll say humble words, deceiving words, but his actions, he'll have all the, the Prophet said, resources will follow him like the, 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 the bees follow honey. Right? So such a has nothing with him or nothing in his possession because what will happen? This whole economic system will fall. Right? This whole oil build system will fall. Okay? This whole paper money system will fall. And then a new superpower will rise in Israel. And you are either part of it or you're not part of it. And if you're not part of it, you will have almost nothing. Even to the point the Prophet said that at that time your food will be Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, Allahu Akbar, the Tasbih, the Sayyid Hadith. And it's in Sayyid Bukhari. And so at that time you'll have nothing. And you will be the one with nothing. Right? And Isa Islam was in that situation when the Roman Empire was in charge of Bani Israel when, when he was alive. And so he had nothing but the Jal, the Jal will be the one giving you the options. Hey, take this fire or take this water. What do you want? Remember, I mentioned that there will be a lack of water, right? And so he'll be giving you the option of what you want that lifestyle you used to have with the paper money. And you want that lifestyle option that you used to have with, with, you know, oil and all these things, and you want city life, well, you know, come and join me. I'm not that bad. I'm, you know, I, I, and so on and so forth. Such a one has nothing with him or in his possession as though he wiped his arms with his hands. Okay? It, for it is a custom of the Arabs to do thus indicating of having nothing. Tamsaha. He wiped himself. Okay? He says, look, I have nothing. Okay, nothing. This is, you know, wipe, wiping to show I have nothing. Okay. Uh, uh, to remove. Okay. Min shayin. Tamasaha min shayin. To remove a thing. Uh, or with a thing. Okay. So Isa alayhi salatu wasalam comes to remove a people who have the judgment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on them. Tamasaha. He acted in a friendly or sincere manner. This is Isa alayhi salatu wasalam. One to the other. Tasaddaqa, meaning the, uh, to have sincerity. And they made a contract, meaning, or a bargain, with one another. Man ansar ilallah, qala al-hawariyuna nahnu ansar Allah. Who is the helper, who is going to be my helper in the cause of Allah? And the disciples responded, we are the helpers of this contract. This is the bay'ah, you can say. Okay. And struck the palm of one another. So this means I have nothing, but this also means I'm giving you the pledge. Okay. To put your plate, your the the to confirm something with this pledge. And to swear swear to the the, the same. You can say bayra. You can say half. Half means to swear something. Okay. The masahu. They took one another by the hand. Um. Okay. The other meaning is to draw the sword. Okay, uh, from the scabbard. Okay, next page. Okay, and uh, let me just bring this up. A garment of thick, coarse hair cloth, and a piece of such stuff as is spread in the house or tent. Okay, meaning some rough cloth. So he was the Hawari Yun, even the word. Uh, itself indicates people that were wearing white dress, okay, and this would be a coarse dress, okay. It wasn't like silky or these are people who have nothing. Bilas, such as worn by monks, and uh, you can say kisa or hair cloth or old and worn out garment, okay. Amsahun or mahsuhun, 
and the uh, and then the uh, it also means uh, the main part or the middle of the road. Why does it mean that? Because Isa alayhi salatu wasalam, you know the straight path is very wide. Surat al-Mustaqim is very wide. Okay, Allah is al wasi al, you know, He is very wide. His path, His straight path, His, you know, uh, uh, Allah is on Surat al-Mustaqim, right? So Allah is on, and Allah is al wasi. So, but he, there's the narrow path, the true, 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 true path within that wide path. That is the path of Isa alayhi salatu wasalam. And he actually talks about this in the Bible. Okay, the middle, then we are called Ummatul Wasata, the middle one. Okay, so. Paucity of fresh flesh in prosteries and thighs, smallness of butt, buttocks. Now he has crooked legs he, and because of that, his buttocks might be very small. I'm talking about the jal here, right? Um, then, Masahatun. Ala fulan masahatun min jimal. Upon such a one, there appears somewhat of beauty. Okay, there's certain Isa alayhi salatu salam will have a mark of beauty, a sign, a mark, a trait of beauty. Okay, masahatu karam, some mark of trait of dignity and nobility, and the like. And a mode of expression is said to be used only in praise, so that you do not say. Alayhi mas, uh, mas qabih. But you, uh, so you don't say mas'hatu qabih. You don't say there's a mark of ugliness. Okay? But you say there's a mark of, it's always used in the positive sense. So Masih Isa ibn Maryam is a man who was a person who had trait of nobility. Okay? But you'll, and why? Because he's from the family of Dawud alayhi salatu wasalam and before that Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam. So, but you say also, Bihi mas'hatun min huzal. In him is somewhat or a sign of mark of leanness, which is a phrase of the Arabs mentioned. Okay, mas'hatun in the cheek of the horse. It also has this meaning. So maybe uh, at that time, we do know at the time of Isa alayhi salatu wasalam, Muslims will be riding horses. Masih also means to wipe over with such thing as oil. And this is also true of the Prophet. And this is also true of Isa alayhi salatu wasalam. He was known with the watini uh, wa zaytun, the fig oil. Okay, And there are so many verses in the Bible that talk about this. The Masih, the Christ, the anointed Jesus, on whom be peace. Okay, um, Originally, Mashiha, this is the Jewish word, okay, with sheen. But learned, learned differed as to the word, whether it be Arabic or Arabic. Arab, Meaning, is this an Arabic word or is it Arabized word? Mu'arab? Uh, mu is it Mu'arab, something that became part of the Arabic language? Or is it part of Arabi itself? Okay. And uh, then, uh, 50 opinions respecting respecting the, duri duri the different duriations of this. In another work, he has made 56. Masih. Or, and then here's very important. Al-Masihul Kazab. The Masih, the Christ, that is the great liar, okay, which is referring to a dijjal It is not allowable, however, to apply to him the appellation. The al you cannot use al masih a dijjal You have to say masihu dijjal Al masih the masih is Isa alayhi salatu wasalam, and that is should show, show you the significance of this word, okay. So unless a case like the following in which the poet says, uh, and then the, there are some exceptions, okay. إِذَا مَصِيهُ يَقْتُلُ الْمَصِيحِ When the Messiah, Masih will kill the Masih. When the true Masih will kill the false Masih. So in that case, because it's referring to a particular person, then it has that. So, But otherwise, the Al is not. Uh, masih means sweat, so-called, because it is wiped. When you have sweat, you wipe it. And so he wipes out a people. He wipes the people to cure them. He you know, and then, you know, just like he's wiping, uh, and then also this, uh, I ha you know, the idea of having nothing. Uh, when you wipe something, you remove it, so you have nothing, and so all these things are interrelated. When it pours forth, it, it dirham, of which the expression is obliterated. Uh, okay, so now a man having one side of his face plain, without eye or eyebrow, 
this is the other. So the word Masih itself means without having an eye. And this is refer this is Masih Dajjal, the one eyed one who is a deceiver. Okay? So this this is what it means here. Okay? Without eye or eyebrow, said to apply in the sense of Dajjal among others. One eyed. Masih. A rough napkin, a handkerchief. With, with which one wipes himself, so-called because the face is wiped with it and because it retains the dirt. Okay, if it's rough, it'll retain the dirt. Okay, Masih, beautiful in the face. So one is Masih, he has, he has, he's disfigured and he has one eye. He's disfigured and one eye is one Masih. And the other is Masih, he looks beautiful. So these are also opposites, you can see. One who journeys or goes about much for the sake of devotion as a devotee. So me, Isa is going from one place to the next place to the next place to the next place as a devotion to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? In devotion to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, the word Masih also means to err greatly. A great liar. One who lies much. Masih. Mimsah. And Amsah. Of which the last is mashau, okay, very voracious, meaning now the opposite. It means also the very truthful, very voracious, very the, the siddiq, a meaning unknown to many of the lexic uh, and probably obsolete in their time, okay. Masih, as I also mentioned, created blessing and goodly with blessing and prosperity. Of course, this is referring to Isa alayhi salatu wasalam. Created with unfortunateness, so the ugly and unfortunate. Okay, so one is blessed, the other is unfortunate. So you can see these both meanings are applying to either Isa alayhi salatu wasalam or the Jal. Misahatun, measuration of the land. If anyone has an opinion of how this all fits in, it would be very interesting to see. A portion or lock of hair hanging loosely from the middle of the head or the back. So he had long hair, okay, and that... Uh, that would either come into the front or would hang loosely in, in the back. Or hair that is left without its being dressed with oil or anything else. Again, hair that has oil on it. Without being dressed with oil or anything else. Or that part of a man's head that is between the ear and the eyebrow. Meaning between here and here. Okay. Um, then uh, a man wipes with his hand. Okay. Uh, now. Uh, a bow, an excellent bow. Masihatun means a bow. Okay. Now, a measurer of land. Okay. Uh, has a fretting of edge of uh, upon his breast, produced by his elbow, without making it bleed. And so these are some of the other meanings. Uh, he ha uh, and then a woman who combs or dresses the hair. Uh, a, a flat place with small pebbles and without plants or herbage. This is also a meaning. Okay. Uh, and then um, it has other meanings uh, that I will skip some of these other meanings that. Uh, Signifies this as having smooth or soft feet without uh, chaps. So, you know, uh, that they repel water when it falls upon them. A woman whose, uh, I will leave this part because it uh, has to do with women. Uh, a man having little flesh, okay, on his thighs and his, his posteriors. Um, a man having his inner sides uh, rubbing together. Okay, so that is also there. Okay, we're almost done now. Uh, a hostile attack. So, ghazwatun mas'hahu, by troops of horses, which is what Isa will do, in which the attacking par party passes lightly by the party attacked. Or brushes them without remaining with them. So they come, attack, and keep moving. Okay? So that's also one of the meanings of Masih. So Masih will, he, this is exactly what he did before, and this is what, okay? Therefore, uh, 
a flat track of land. This is also any piece of wood on a ship. And so now we're getting into, uh, I think, um, a, okay, tamsih means a deceiver, one who van vanishes, uh, sorry, blandishes, soothes, or weeds, one with his words and deceives, okay? Insolent, wicked, corrupt man, a great liar who, if asked, will not tell thee truly whence he comes. Okay, he won't tell you where he's coming from. Who lies thee as to the place where he comes from, okay? Um, okay, so now we are done. So these are the different major aspects of what the word Masih means. And so I need your help in the comment section. Think about it. You know, how does this relate to the scenario we're in? Which of these words do you think fit in? Uh, give me your ideas and share with your friends and your family. Inshallah ta'ala, subscribe and like my videos. Thank you for those of you who watched to the end. Jazakumullah khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Make sure to subscribe today and make sure you like and make sure you leave your comments and ideas. Jazakumullah khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.